attack on you know, primary adrenal insufficiency. Uh, and of course, once you say primary, it means that the problem is with the adrenal gland. That was the primary. So for acute or chronic primary adrenal insufficiency, uh, you can use an adrenal steroid. And what is most often used in that situation is this drug that is called solucortef. Solucortef or soluble cortef. Okay. And so you say that your cortef is hydrocortisone, which is equivalent to the natural glucocorticoid or cortisol. And so the cortef, see, cortef by itself, that had a cortisone, that can be administered orally, and it can also be given IM. Solo cortef, though, is administered intravenously mostly, but it can also be given intramuscularly. But it is primarily used uh, intravenously give about 100 milligrams IV Q8, you know, every eight hours for the management of either your acute or chronic primary uh, adrenal insufficiency. 100 milligrams IV every eight hours Q8. And the other agent that you can see used in that situation is the dexamethasone, which is decadron. The I name is decadron. Uh, decadron has different rules of administration. It can be administered orally, it can be given IV, it can be given IM. Uh, it is also sometimes used uh, for ophthalmic purposes. In other words, you have an ophthalmic preparation of your decadron that can be used for uh, eye disorders. And it can also be used for arctic, that is air infections. But we'll mention it again, and that's your long acting agent, which means zero mineral corticoid effect. The long actins just have your glucocorticoid uh, effects. So um, those are the two <coughs> primary agents that are used for that replacement therapy. Then the other one, of course, will be your secondary adrenal insufficiency, especially when it is a problem right over here at the pituitary level. That will be secondary adrenal insufficiency. And in that situation, you also use cortex uh, or solucortex, rather. You use solucortex, and you can also use that uh, decadron. insufficiency, you usually have to give the adrenal steroid in combination with your synthroid. Okay? Because if the problem is here with the pituitary, it might also affect the release of these other hormones. Uh, your growth hormone, releasing hormone, because all of these are produced uh, from the anterior pituitary. Uh, so if you see uh, a 
Adeno hypothesis, that is your anterior pituitary. And that's where all these other hormones can be released. Uh, if you see neural hypothesis, that is your uh, back or posterior uh, pituitary gland. And what comes from the neural hypothesis is your ADH and your oxytocin. Okay, those are from the posterior. You know, so when you're dealing with the secondary, which means there's a problem with the pituitary, not only do you give your uh, solocortex for decadron, uh, you also give your thyroid stimulating hormone or, or, or you give your thyroxine, levothyroxine or centroid. Uh, because if the pituitary is down, it may affect the production of all those uh, hormones. So that's how you can manage those. And then uh, your CAH, uh, that is where you have congenital, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia. We've already discussed that yesterday. That's when you have a deficiency in one of those enzymes that are involved in your uh, biosynthesis of the adrenal hormones. The example we gave was when you have a natural or a familial deficiency in your 21 hydroxylase. And we showed how everything will now be directed towards the making of sex hormones, and you could have uh, that macrogenitosomia in males, and you could have your virilization in female patients. Okay, so that would be your congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And again, what is most often used to manage that condition would be your solocortex, and your decadron. So those ones are used for replacement uh, therapy. And then uh, the other group will be your so-called non-endocrine related uh, conditions. So you can use adrenal steroids for replacement, which will be endocrine related conditions and then for non-endocrine uh, conditions, uh, which are often uh, characterized by some kind of inflammation. That's why your adrenal steroids can work in them. And uh, one of those uh, conditions, of course, will be your rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid arthritis. And for rheumatoid arthritis, like you say, you can use many uh, adrenal steroids, uh, but often you can see prednisone being used. That's your delta zone. And that is often given orally for rheumatoid arthritis, anywhere from 10 to 50 milligrams on a daily basis. Okay, so you can see that used, you can see transcinolone being used a whole lot. Okay. And of course, your methyl prednisolone That 
can see it being used uh, a whole lot also. Uh, Decadron is also used sometimes. So those are some common ones uh, that are used. Transinolone comes in so many different formulations. Um, you can see, you know, that's a brand name for it. You know, Kenalog, Transinolone. And uh, you can uh, see Transinolone uh, in all of these. Okay, Kenalog in all of these. That's one formulation of your uh, uh, transinolone. Uh, you can see it as asthma cord. You can see it as nasal cord. That will be uh, another uh, formulation of your transinolone. And of course, we know it can be uh, used topically, just as a spray, for instance. Uh, now, the aura base, that is Kenalog in aura base, is mainly used for mouth sores. So, we can use that as another indication of your adrenal steroid because once you use that paste, that aura base is like a paste, uh, it can adhere or bind to the inside portion of the cheeks that is buccal. So it can bind to the inside of the cheeks, it can bind to the base of the teeth. So it helps to manage sores that are within the mouth. And this, um, okay, let me just put this as another one. Kenalog is another preparation there. The Kenalog can be administered parenterally. For instance, you can give it IM. Kenalog can also be administered intra-articularly. Intra-articular means joints. So you can inject it straight into the joint to manage your rheumatoid arthritis. It can also be administered intralesionally. That is, you can inject it straight into the lesion that is associated with a particular disease condition. Uh, for instance, if a patient has discoid, discoid lupus, erythromatosis. Okay, that is different from your systemic systemic lupus erythromatosis. Okay, and some people just call it lupus. Okay. So systemic lupus erythromatosis is different from your discord. Discord is not systemic. It's usually limited to rash on the skin or on the face or across the nose bridge, you know, and uh, to manage that discoid type of lupus, you can actually inject your catalog into the lesions, that is into the uh, eruptions that you see with discoid uh, lupus. So you can have said uh, intralesional administration of your kernel. Of course, you have the cream, you have the ointment, and you have the spray that you can use on the skin. 
in case you have some skin conditions like pruritus, you know, itching, like regular rash, like dermatitis, you know. So all of those can be managed with your uh, topical triacinamol. And uh, the Nasacort, of course, from the name nasal means inhaled through the nose. Okay, and that will be used for, for asthma. So it means we can list asthma as one of your indications of adrenal steroids. So whenever you say nasal, of course, it means through the nose. Asthma cord, of course, is administered through the mouth. So oral inhalation and nasal cord will be nasal inhalation. And uh, you also have a condition, I mean, uh, a preparation that combines your tramcinolone with nystatin. That combination is called mycolog. So mycolog is tramcinolone uh, with nystatin. And that is, of course, used for fungal infections. So that's your mycolog combination of transcinolone and nystatin. So you see your canalog or transcinolone has many different routes of administration and sometimes that route of administration uh, also determines where you use it or how you use it. Okay, so the other agent is methylprednisolone. It's commonly used for your uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Methylprednisolone, you can see it as a, a retention enema. And it will come under that brand name, Medraw or retention enema. Retention enema. Um, so we have to uh, list that. Uh, so the retention enema preparation is used to manage ulcerative colitis. And it can also be used to manage Crohn's disease. Uh, another retention enema that is used to manage ulcerative colitis is that hydrocortisone preparation, cort enema. And if you break it down like that, it just means cortisone or hydrocortisone in the enema. Uh, administration form. When it is used for, uh, as, when it's used as a retention enema, the patient has to lie on their side as the drug is being used rectally through the rectum. And they have to remain on that side for one hour, you know, for that drug to work. So on the side 
and for one arrow. Whenever you use cod enema, which is hydrocortisone in the enema form, or you use medraw, you know, retention enema. So that's one uh, way to do the endoprednisone. Uh, you can also say your methylprednisolone uh, as your medrol dose pack. That is the tablet. That's the one who said you taper the uh, dosage. If you look at that package, uh, it comes like a credit card thing. You know, if you see it, Know, like that, and it keeps reducing by one until you get to just only one. Um, if you look on the package, you'll see the description that okay, you take two tablets in the morning, you know, with breakfast, then one with lunch, one with dinner, and two at bedtime of day one. You know, so it's like two with breakfast, one with lunch, one with dinner and two at better, you know, they just. However, it does not have to be given that way. If a patient has a strong stomach, if you will, where nothing irritates their stomach, they can actually take all of those six tablets at once. If they, if they want to, they can take three in the morning and three in the evening. So it just depends on how well they can tolerate medications, you know. But what you will see written under those tablets as a means of administering will be what I said before, two with breakfast, one with lunch, one with dinner, and two at better. And they keep decreasing it by one until they get to the last one. And uh, you have like a total of 21 tablets in that, in that uh, pack. So that's your oral and this uh, medical dose pack, most often used for rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. And you can also say uh, methylprednisolone as your solomedrol. And solomedrol is a sodium succinate preparation of methylprednisolone. It's a sodium succinate preparation, just like we see this sodium sodium succinate for hydrocortisone. Solomedrol is a sodium succinate preparation, and that is administered parenterally. You can give it IV, give it IM. And just like solucortef, it is most often administered intravenously. And then you can see methylprednisolone as depot medrol. Uh, depot medrol is not to be given IV. Okay. Depot medrol is not to be given IV. Um, Depomedro is supposed to be given IM if you want to give it that parenteral. But apart from IM, okay, you can also uh, give it intra arterial. That is, it can be administered directly into the arteries. Okay, intra arterial. And you know, intra-arterial administration is not easy. Uh, somebody has to actually have some training. If you look at your skin or your arm, the vessels you see there are your veins. Those are easy to reach. The arteries are deeper in. So you have to have some training to be able to give a drug intra-arterial. And uh, depomedrol can be given intra-arterially, and just like your transylindrome, it can also be administered intra-articularly, that is, to the joints, and you can also give it peri-arterially, I mean, articularly. 
that is, you can administer it around the joints, carry, you know, around the joints in the patient that has rheumatoid uh, uh, arthritis. You can also see Depomedron uh, actually administ administered through the conjunctiva. Okay. So subconjunctiva administration of Depomedron. You know, and just mm -hmm. like Tramcillanol, it can also be administered intralesionally. So you can give it into the lesion, just like we talked about in this called lupus, erythromatosis. So you see it has uh, many routes of administration. And for rheumatoid arthritis, the dose pack is the one that is most often used. you have to sleep on one side and then it is put into the rectum and the rectum and you have to stay in that position for one hour. And that's the retention enema. When you give medrol uh, retention enema like that, uh, it is again mainly used for ulcerated colitis or for Crohn's disease. So that's uh, one indication there. Another indication for your uh, adrenal steroids uh, can be <clears throat> the one we mentioned earlier, systemic lupus erythematosus, or what people just call lupus. Uh, there is no cure for lupus yet. You know, so anybody that has lupus, you always see them on long-term adrenal steroid, you know, before they eventually succumb to the disease. Uh, there is no uh, uh, cure for SLE. So you use steroids to basically make them, you know, feel okay until they pass on. And you use steroids because when you have SLV, every organ in the body can be affected. You can have inflammation of every organ in the body, uh, including the skin. And you always see that thing that is called butterfly rash. So if you look at the face of somebody that has lupus, it is sometimes very easy to, to tell. rash. It's a rash that exists on both cheeks and then across the ridge of the nose. You know, so butterfly rash distinguishes or it's very easy to see in a patient that has systemic lupocele necrosis. And in all of them, the skin, the liver, the kidneys, the heart, every organ can become inflamed. And so you manage uh, those inflammatory conditions by using adrenal steroids. And for SLE, prednisone is the one that is most often used. You know, prednisone, you use again anywhere from 10 to 50 milligrams uh, on a daily basis. So uh, it's very useful there. Decadron is also useful in systemic lupus erythematosus. Uh, you can have glomerulonephritis or what you uh, can 
referred to as nephrotic syndrome. Especially when that GN or glomerulonephritis stems from or is associated with lupus. So you can use adrenosteroids for glomerulonephritis uh, that is associated with your systemic lupus erythematosus. And here again, your main agent is prednisone. Prednisone is what is most often used for that. And next to that, of course, will be your uh, decadron, you know, dexamethasone, that is used in that situation. Um, that's, that's a muscular dystrophy type that is called Duchenne. muscular dystrophy. The Shane's muscular dystrophy before I even get to that, let me mention this drug. There is a monoclonal antibody, monoclonal antibody, uh, you can see it as benglicate, as a as a brand name in some countries. That is the closest to having a long-term management of SLE. Okay, you can use that monoclonal antibody offers very good health in patients that have lupus. Uh, you know, the is the genetic name, it's a monoclonal antibody. But to go on to Duchenne uh, muscular dystrophy, steroid preparation that is called the Fazacort. Okay. It was specially made for managing Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And next semester when we get to the you know antiviral drugs, we'll discuss that a little bit more because there are, there's a class of antiviral agents you know, that you call, you know, antisense oligonucleotides. Um, and they are very good for managing muscular dystrophy. There are different types of muscular dystrophy. But in your antiviral section, we'll mention those. But the Flazacort is an adrenosteroid preparation that uh, was originally and specifically made for managing uh, the shame muscular dystrophy. That drug is also beneficial in a patient that has asthma, and it also helps to some extent a patient that has COPD. So it is helpful in those situations. It is also helpful in rheumatoid arthritis. So it has some situations in which it is helpful, but it was mainly designed for the Duchenne uh, muscular dystrophy. That's the first part. And then we have some uh, other indications. And for these indications that we've listed, we'll come back over some of them to, to talk about specific agents that are frequently used to manage that. Uh, 
for eye diseases or eye disorders that are associated with inflammation. So if you have an inflammatory disorder or inflammatory disease of the eye, My car alarm, sorry. If you have some um, eye diseases that are associated with inflammation, you can use your adrenal steroids. Um, you have a viral disease of the eyes that is called dendritic keratitis. Adrenal steroids are never to be used to treat dendritic keratitis. Even though from the name you see there's an inflammation, ITIS. Okay. It is caused by herpes simplex. That's the causative agent of uh, dendritic keratitis. The reason you don't use an adrenal steroid in that situation is that yes, the patient might feel a little better because the adrenal steroid manages the inflammation, but the adrenal steroid does nothing to the virus. So essentially, the disease progresses even though the patient was feeling a little better. Okay. So it is an absolute contraindication for your adrenal steroids. And you have many preparations of adrenal steroids that you can see used in uh, eye diseases. Um, for instance, you have one that is called Bexol. Excuse me, sir. So we can, we can as well use it for the what? We can as well use the adrenal for the headaches too. No, in the eye. Oh, so. Yeah, herpes simplex is the causative agent. Oh, okay, the virus. Okay. Of, yes, that's the virus that causes that dendritic keratitis. But you have some other eye or ophthalmic preparations that contain adrenal steroids. Uh, for instance, one of them is uh, your uh, Vexor, another one is Rx, and uh, you have uh, another one which is Flarex. see it as FML, fluoromethylone. Okay. And FML is actually like a branding. You see it on the box. Okay. It, uh, and it's the same thing as Flarex. And it's fluoromethylone. That's why it's called FML. Uh, then you have one that is called Multimax. Alrex and Lotimax contain the same adrenal steroid, which is multipregnal. That's the adrenal steroid in your Alrex and in your Lotimax. The difference is that Alrex is like a uh, preparation that is about 40 times lower than your Lotimax in terms of concentration. So Lotimax is a higher concentration than Rx, but they both contain Lotipregnol. Um, there is a product called Xylet. Xylet contains this same Lotipregnol uh, in combination with Tobramycin. Okay. And tobramycin, of course, is one of your aminoglycosides that you use 
for uh, bacterial infection. So if you have a bacterial infection in the eyes, uh, you can use Zymet. If the bacterial infection uh, is caused by an agent that is susceptible to management with amino glycosides. For instance, if the, if the infection is caused by a bacterium that is an anaerobic organism, you cannot use this product. Amino glycosides are totally ineffective against anaerobic organisms. But we'll, we'll get that next semester. Okay. So, uh, lotipregnol is what you have in xylate, which of course will be one of your uh, adrenal steroids. Uh, this tobramycin is uh, also sometimes uh, combined with that dexamethasone that we were talking about. Tobramycin with uh, Dexamethasone is what you have in Tobra Dex. Okay. Tobra Dex. Uh, you can also see it combined with Cipro or Ciprofloxacin. And that would be your Cipro Dex. That is. Ciprofloxacin, which is an antibacterial, combined with dexamethasone, which is your long acting agent that would have no mineral corticoid uh, activities. Okay, then uh, you also have uh, HMS. Contains medrasone, okay, which is also an adrenal steroid preparation that you use for inflammatory conditions in the in the eyes. Um, prednisone or infrapregnisolone. And I've already told you that prednisone is converted to prednisolone in the body. Okay. We also have an ophthalmic preparation that contains that. Uh, you can see some brand names like Pred Forte. Okay. Uh, that's another one, the Corner Pred. Okay. Those are uh, adrenal steroid preparations that contain prednisone that you can use for managing inflammatory conditions in the uh, in the eyes. And we mentioned dexamethasone that can be used, which is dexamethasone. So you, you have all those different. Uh, uh, Preparations in the eye that you can, I mean, for eye uh, conditions, particularly inflammatory conditions that are associated with eye uh, diseases. And sometimes the adrenal steroid is combined with an antibacterial, as you see here, for the management of infections that are accompanied by inflammation. Now, the adrenal steroid, remember, is not doing anything to the organ or to the organism. It's just managing the uh, inflammation that is associated with that disease. That's a product called Maxitrol. Maxitrol has in it dexamethasone also. Okay. It has, it is a combination of neomycin and 
polymixing and then dexamethasone. If you replace that dexamethasone with hypercortisone, then what you get is cortisporin. which is also used for eye infections. Now, whatever you can administer as an ophthalmic agent, you can use also for the ear infections. But the reverse is not true. Okay? If it's an ophthalmic preparation, it can be used for optic, that is eye, I mean ear, Whatever is an atomic preparation, it can be used in the ears. But the reverse will not be true. If something is made as an audit preparation, it cannot be used in atomic situations because uh, it is not sterile enough. So we have all these different uh, preparations that you can see used in the eye. Uh, Durazole is another uh, adrenosteroid preparation that is used in the eyes. So if somebody is to have, let's say, cataract removal or eye surgery, you know, you always see these two, Vexol and Durazole prescribed for that patient to either prevent inflammation or to manage inflammation after the surgery. Okay, so if somebody is going for cataract removal or eye surgery, usually you see Durazol and you see Bexol being pre prescribed uh, for that patient. Blephomide is another one that we can mention. Okay. Uh, Blephomide contains prednisolone. You can use it, um, and it's combined with sulamide or sulfacetamide. Sulfacetamide, of course, is one of your uh, sulfur drugs that you use for bacterial infections, particularly in the eyes. So those are some preparations that are used for eye diseases and I say also for ear diseases. Um, depending on what the patient there's a product called Cipro HC Arctic that's ciprofloxacin with hydrocortisone. Okay, so, hydrocortisone will be the adrenosteroid in it, and that's made mainly for ear infections. So, eye and ear infections is a different uh, adrenosteroids that are exploited. Sarcoidosis. As you can tell, it is not an inflammatory condition. And yet, you use adrenal steroids for managing that condition. It is an idiopathic, generalized 
reticulosis. And it's usually chronic. So it's an idiopathic, chronic, it, uh, generalized reticulosis. So in sarcoidosis, you see proliferation of your RES cells, cells that are involved in the reticular endothelial system. Okay. And it is not an inflammatory condition. The reason you use adrenosteroids in sarcoidosis is because of excessively high levels of calcium in that condition. You get severe high paracalcemia. And as we've mentioned before, the renal effects of your adrenosteroids will be to increase the excretion of calcium while we are absorbing sodium. So a lot of the calcium can be reduced by, your, by giving your adrenosteroids. Uh, so it's not to manage an inflammation. There's no inflammation in sarcoidosis. It's to actually manage the severe hypercalcemia. And why do you want to reduce the levels of calcium in the bloodstream or the body? Because what? Exactly. You don't want calcium crystals to be deposited in organs because it can then lead to a stone okay, in that organ. That's why you have to bring down your calcium levels. And then you have some uh, cancer situations. Uh, we can say leukemia, which will cause, so for example, your acute, acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL, acute lymphocytic leukemia. And sometimes even you can see uh, adrenosteroids being used in breast cancer. For breast cancer, it is uh, mainly your prednisone. Even for acute lymphocytic leukemia, it is also mainly uh, prednisone. a cancer combination regimen that you use in ALL, uh, your COP. Uh, C is cyclophosphamide or cytoxan. And O is oncoming. And P is your prednisone. Okay, so that can be used in your leukemic patient. Uh, MOP regimen is metlorethamine. Metlorethamine and then O is oncogen, which is branding for the Christian. Uh, P is procarbazine. And then the other P, of course, is your prednisone. That's your MOP regimen that you can use in some leukemic situations. Okay. It's what? Don't worry too much about those yet because you will know all of them when we do cancer chemotherapy. Uh, okay. So, are we good? Okay. We're not good? <laughs> Just know mob and cock, okay? Mom.
Okay. Huh? 